Smart India Hackathon 2023 is round the corner. The problem statements have been released. Dealing with problem statements in a hackathon, particularly the one like Smart India Hackathon involves a systematic and strategic approach. In this series, we will be joined by some past winners of the Smart India Hackathon to help you guide and navigate through these problem statements effectively. Today we have with us Saeed Ibrahim, who will be sharing his thoughts and inputs on the problem statement SIH1384, which is developing an interactive gaming software on intellectual property awareness for school students. Welcome, Saeed Ibrahim. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Vikas. And uh, Saeed, uh, to begin with, uh, please introduce us uh, to yourself and you know just tell us something about yourself. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Saeed Ibrahim Maaz. I'm from Bangalore. Uh, I am an uh, associate engineer working at Blackhawk Network India mm -hmm. currently. Uh, I graduated this year and in my third year, which is the year 2022, I participated in Smart India Hackathon 2022 and won the problem statement uh, at uh, Nagpur uh, Sri Ramdev Baba College of Engineering uh, for uh, the planetarium uh, problem statement. Okay, that's wonderful and congratulations uh, for that, uh, Said. Now, I mean, since you've been a winner of the past year's hackathon, and you aced a particular problem statement. I think our viewers would be interested to know how you were able to do it. So, I mean, looking at this year's problem statements, uh, I guess you picked up one with which you know you would want to you know share your thoughts uh, with the the aspirants this year. So, what is the present problem statement that you picked? And just tell us something to begin with that. Yeah. Uh, so the problem statement that I've picked was uh, problem statement one three eight four, which was regarding. Uh, an interactive gaming software to develop or uh, to spread intellectual property awareness for school students. So it's uh, based on the problem statement. It was uh, regarding a gamified software uh, which allowed students to understand easily about intellectual property rights in India. Okay, so uh, I think the viewers will be very interesting interested to know if you were the person dealing with this problem statement, how would you be dealing with it? Like how would you plan it? So, first of all, when you look at any problem statement, in the problem statement, there is information given by SIH itself in detail as to what they expect from the students or what they expect from the team. So, it is required to go through the information or the tips, which I prefer to call, uh, about uh, how to approach the problem statement and how to solve it. And uh, as they have mentioned already, uh, they wanted uh, in the general description of the problem statement, they mentioned how they want students to understand the different types of uh, intellectual property rights like copyright, patent, etc. And um, based on different difficulty levels, uh, raise their awareness about it. So there are different parts when you submit a problem statement in the, for the PPT. The tech stack or the technology which I would use would be preferably Unity because uh, Unity is a game development software and uh, the problem statement requires us to make a gamified software which is easy for students to interact and use. And uh, apart from that, uh, Unity is um, platform independent so anyone can use it on their laptop or their mobile phones. And uh, the approach with I would, uh, which I would go with was is uh, such that um, I would uh, allow the student to have uh, pick uh, random objects from different parts of a scene and then uh, make the student to build a, a design or a logo or some patent of some sort and make the student uh, take, uh, go through the process of different stages of how the patent is filed and the different uh, details that are required when while filing a patent and the stages and how to proceed with them at okay. the same time uh, okay, I would, Saeed, uh, uh, before we go ahead with the patent part of it, let's stick to the yeah. technology part for a while. So you said your choice would be software called Unity. Okay, Unity as I understand is uh, something which is not very difficult to, you know, uh, work on. But still, I mean, would you want uh, some kind of a, some basic uh, technical know-how with your people uh, dealing with this particular problem statement? So let's talk about the team first. Like what kind of a team would it be for, you know, yeah. this particular statement? Uh, 
this problem statement was similar to my problem statement because I also used Unity. So my team consisted of uh, their uh, two coders, myself and uh, I, uh, my junior, he was a part of the team. So uh, we were the two coders and apart from us, we even had uh, four designers. So when you use Unity, you need to design the game objects or the uh, different parts of the software and you need the code people to actually run the code or the objects regarding it. So team preparation wise, I would suggest you, you need to have a balance wherein you know, people have a generalized idea on how to use Unity, even though it is easy comparatively compared to normal coding. Um, Unity requires some basic knowledge like the different packages that you have to have to import beforehand as well as uh, you need a basic uh, C sharp knowledge uh, which will allow you to use uh, imported packages freely. So that would be my team. And, uh, and one of the most important thing is you need to have a compatible team. So my team, I, we had tried and tested in various hackathons and I would suggest you to do the same, like participate in many hackathons and form an ideal team which will support you. So great, that was about the team which you know has some good coding acumen as well as I guess some designing acumen as well. Because using Unity it would be you know good if somebody who is a good designer also using that particular uh, software. So okay, team part taken care of. Now the planning part. How do you go about you know dealing with the problem statement now after this team uh, which you have at your disposal? Yeah. So once you have the team, ideally split the team into like each individually. We all worked on different parts of the software or uh, different parts of the project. So uh, my the designer started. Uh, modeling basically modeling is nothing but uh, understanding and creating the design components in blender so they started understanding blender uh, knowing how to import the pro properties or how to import projects and put it into unity so you can go through the various youtube tutorials and at the same time the coding people we decided to uh, work on the base of the project which required uh, uh, the implementation, actual implementation, uh, once the objects are integrated, you need to make them move, you need to enable the user to select all these click functions, etc. event handlers. We understood the documentation, which it is called documentation and syntax of various functions. We worked on that and we uh, made a base prototype or sample program, I would say, on how to make the app or proceed with that. Okay, great. So now this is like, you know, dealing with the software and the technical part of this. And now about, you know, planning in the entire uh, term in the sense that now the next part is, of course, the IP awareness. Uh, so how does that uh, get into it? Yeah, so research is very important, of course. So if you start taking the problem statement, first of all, you need to understand what is uh, intellectual property rights. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest you to meet lawyers meet uh, patent handlers and uh, various uh, government representatives or legal representatives which have a good idea about what is actually happening and uh, work on understanding uh, the different things. Uh, obviously, you can understand things from the internet, I would suggest that. But if you approach people um, apart from uh, online, uh, through offline interaction, it is much better because it's easier to uh, gain the information and ask doubts uh, face to face. So I would suggest uh, do proper research about uh, the various concepts and uh, other things. So Sayed, have you had any brush with the intellectual property rights in your, you know, during the course when you were like, you know, doing these hackathons or otherwise? I actually have a trademark in my name. So I applied for this uh, trademark uh, because I wanted to understand entrepreneurship. So one of the parts of SIH itself that uh, held a bootcamp about entrepreneurship and how to provide with it. So when I was dealing with that, I got interested about uh, entrepreneurship and the different stages in India, how it can be supported. So I applied for a copyright, not copyright, sorry. I applied for a trademark uh, and uh, this trademark, it was applied four, six months ago and it's almost in the process of getting approved. So once I have the trademark, I have uh, rights over where I use and how I use it. So yeah. Uh, I did, um, it was useful for me and I applied it. Okay, great. So you told us about the technology part of it. How would you ideally be handling this? And also how would you bring in the 
IP awareness aspect by you know talking to the lawyers and doing your own bit of research. Now, how do you like to present this entire thing so as it turns out to be a winner? So, if you have any thoughts on that, yeah. Uh, what uh, looks sell first of all? So, whatever software you make, it has to be easy to be understand. Like it should be easy to understand. At the same time, it should be uh, UI. UI should be very good. It should look better than uh, any any software the student can use. Because uh, since the students are the primary users, um, if the interactions as well as uh, the UI is not good, they lose interest. In our current time, it is uh, very important to have uh, uh, catchy, catchy I would say catchy UI and graphics. So I would focus on that. So first of all, you need to have uh, again designers come into picture. If you have good designers, you can make any object or any um, graphics that you require customized version. And uh, apart from that, um, I would suggest uh, ke, um, work on building a prototype and understanding how the uh, things will work out at the hackathon. So last minute when you go to the hackathon, you need you should not be able to imp you need not do everything from the scratch. You need to have to uh, you need to have a basic idea as to uh, how the different stages are done as well as uh, for example i'll give when you make any gamified software you need to have the menus you need to have the instructions you need to have the exit buttons all these functionalities you need to know the knowledge beforehand because at the hackathon you're not only implementing your idea what the judges and the other requirements that are implemented there that also come into picture so you need to implement the suggestions which the judges give you so i mean very well articulated side i mean uh, I think you covered pretty uh, strongly the entire process, what you would be going through or how ideally you would be handling it. That's nice. So uh, in the end, a final piece of advice to the people who would be looking to, you know, uh, deal with this particular problem statement or who are looking forward to a solution to this particular problem statement. Any final piece of advice? Uh, the advice that I would give to the people who are approaching this problem statement it would be first of all research is very important have an understanding about the problem statement and the content as well beforehand and do extensive research uh, the second advice would be the ui should be very user friendly and easy to understand since it's students you don't know the age group which will be handling it so think accordingly and it should be used across various age groups and third of all third i would uh, suggest uh, you work on having a basic prototype beforehand to understand the different functionalities and the different uh, options or buttons or the documentation so that you don't uh, end up having any trouble on the final day of hackathon because functionality such as having a basic menu the exit buttons or the, the movement or the triggers or the various uh, documentations you need to be prepared and uh, the judges at the hackathon as well, they give you suggestions in real time. So you need to be able to adapt and include these suggestions to make uh, to win, obviously. So if you want to win, you have to ensure that you are fast and you pick up on these uh, changes with it in real time. And uh, the last thing I would tell is, uh, when I was doing this, uh, when, I, uh, when I worked on this pro particular problem statement, similar one, uh, they asked me to integrate real time data, which was new. So understand and have an idea beforehand about the documentation, even though they have not told currently in the problem statement. So great. I think that was a very comprehensive input coming from you, uh, past hackathon winner. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm sure people who would be, you know, uh, uh, willing to participate in this particular competition with this problem statement would be immensely benefited from your thoughts, your inputs, or what you have to say about, you know, how to deal with this. Thank you so much for joining us. And we wish you all the best for any endeavors that you be embarking upon in your life further. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Remember, effective collaboration, communication, and adaptability are crucial for any hackathon. Keep a positive mindset, embrace challenges, and enjoy the learning experience. Good luck with your participation in the Smart India Hackathon.